Yeah. Okay. Hi everyone. Uh, thanks for joining this talk today. And uh, this is a part of Young Scholar Seminar Series in Yunus Emre Institute. And uh, I'm PhD candidate in University College London. My name is Zeynep Sena Öztürk. Uh, Mary is my colleague from uh, UCL. That's why I'm, it's an honor to be uh, introduce her today. Uh, Mary Karabey Sarbakan graduated from Gazi University, uh, Department of Architecture in 2016. After that, she began to work as a research assistant in Gazi Antep Hasan Kalyoncu University, Department of Architecture for four years. And uh, now she's a PhD candidate at University College London, Building Sustainable Energy and Resources, IAD Institute and uh, Institute Sustainable Heritage with a Turkish Government Scholarship. And uh, her PhD focuses on the dynamic interconnections between energy efficiency, heritage, and thermal comfort. Uh, she has been working as a postgraduate teaching assistant uh, at UCL since 2022. And yeah. Thank you, Zeynep. Hello, everyone. Uh, Today I will talk about the energy efficiency of historic buildings in hot and dry climate regions of Turkey. Uh, this is a pilot study which I conduct in 2022. I will present initial finding of my pilot study. Firstly, I will give some introduction about the energy efficiency of historic buildings. Then um, I will show the Turkish Ottoman house typology, then historic house features in hot and dry climate region of Turkey, and uh, my initial findings of pilot study. Uh, in recent years, especially considering the adverse effect of the climate change and global warming, a uh, number of energy efficiency and historic building studies are increased. Uh, you know, the buildings are responsible for almost 40% of the carbon dioxide emissions. And because of that, buildings' energy efficiency measures offer essential opportunities uh, to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and global warming effects. Since historic buildings constitute 25% of the uh, building stock in Europe and 12% uh, in Turkey, it is not possible to ignore this building stock in energy efficiency studies. Both environmental concerns and sociocultural demands motivate the energy efficiency of, of historic building studies. On the other hand, historic uh, current research shows that the historic buildings' carbon emissions uh, can be reduced by over 16 percent by 2050 uh, with refurbishment and re uh, retrofit of historic buildings. Actually, there are no one-size-fits-all solutions for making energy and carbon saving in older buildings. However, there are some general principles. Uh, to understand the energy performance in a building and uh, identify opportunities for improvement, it is important to view it holistically in an interactive system. Understanding the building fabrics, building services and people and interaction between them will help to have a solution. This topic should be handled with the regional, climatic data, building specific detail and the unique value attributed to these buildings. Energy efficiency means providing more services for the same energy input or the same services with less energy input. And energy efficient retrofits of historic buildings are more complicated than modern buildings. A conflict between energy efficiency of historic buildings and the preservation of their heritage value could emerge. For instance, uh, the energy efficiency intervention can potentially damage the heritage value and current status of the buildings. Uh, because of that, it should be applied carefully by considering all factors which I mentioned in the previous slides. The restrictions are not only due to the structural characteristic of these historic buildings, but also it is about the legal framework of the interventions. 
Actually, there are two main aspects of the achieving energy efficiency in conservation practices. These are understanding the building features to understand the building features and it is potential to identify design strategies to decrease energy consumption. And understanding the behavior of the residents. In recent studies, it is understood that occupant behavior seriously affect the energy efficiency of historic buildings. They are really important parameter in, the, in that studies. And we always uh, should remember, buildings don't consume the energy, people consume energy. So we cannot ignore build, uh, people factor in that studies. Understanding relationship of the building's features and residents' behavior will help to have a holistic solution for energy-efficient heritage conservation studies. Conservation is an overall concept which includes uh, maintenance, preservation, uh, restoration, reconstruction, uh, adaptation, interpretation of cultural heritage. Also, heritage is considered to be a dynamic, ever-evolving system of relationship. Heritage is uh, considered to be a dynamic, ever-evolving system of relationship between uh, materials, values, senses, space, environment, time, and the resources. On the other hand, conservation is a multi-layered and dynamic system. It constitutes different layers like building component, building, neighborhood, and city level. Uh, after Venice Charter in 1964, the necessity of considering the conservation phenomena in a holistic manner with its environment was revealed. And in 2011, UNESCO in Historic Urban Landscape recommendation, uh, it has also emphasized the dynamic nature of the living cities and the importance of local authorities with holistic conservation. Turkish Ottoman house is the type of the house located inside the historic Ottoman Empire's border. Uh, Examples of this house typology are found in Anatolia and Europe. Greece, Kosovo and Turkey are the, some of the examples. But these regions have a different pictures. Here housing types that vary depending on the climate can be seen. While wooden material are mostly used in the west and north part, it can see uh, stone material are used the south part and adobe is the east part. As a result, regional specific characteristics emerge. Although uh, Ottoman uh, period residents have similar plant typologies, uh, each neighborhood has different characteristics due to the parameters like religion, climate, scenery, topography, geography, uh, sociocultural dynamics, lifestyles, and local materials. Also, these houses have developed some specific and different features to handle their climates. I think this part is really interesting, Marve, because when we look from the, these uh, maps, we can see really different characteristic reactions, depends on the culture, climate, and their cultural uh, differences depends on the each other. And uh, now we are going to, I think, the Antep. <laughs> yes. Now uh, we will focus now on Gaziantep, which is the south part of the uh, Turkey. South East Asia. Uh, Gaziantep is the located southeast, southeastern Anatolia region of Turkey, and the city has Mediterranean climate uh, with hot and dry summers and cool and often snowy winters. Uh, the buildings in Gaziantep built in 19th century and hosted different religions, cultures, and ethnicities. Gaziantep traditional houses have developed various strategies to cope with the uh, hot climate. In addition to climate, uh, cultural elements were also effective in creating this kind of strategies. For example, the strategies, oh, sorry, here. 
Um, this strategy is also can be classified both the neighborhood scale and the building scale. For neighborhood scale, we, we can talk about the narrow streets and high walls. The courtyard walls are high and the streets are narrow in the city. And this organization has allowed shadow on the street uh, at all hours of the day. Also, narrow streets create a wind corridors. Um, on the other hand, in, in addition to the climatic and topographical condition, uh, social factors have a great influence on the shaping of the citrus in these ways. Uh, the citrus shaped in this way also prote protect the privacy of the family life. Also, because of the privacy concerns, uh, there are no windows on the ground floor of the facades facing the streets. You can see in these pictures here. For building scale, we can talk about the material, courtyard, and natural ventilation systems and underground chambers. Uh, the material which is used in the traditional architecture of the Gaziantep is made uh, of limestone, uh, which are known as uh, Havara and Kaymak. This is the local name of these stones. Uh, the walls are generally about 60 cm thick. Uh, it ensures that the interior are cool in the summer and warm in the winter. And these walls are uh, consist of two layers uh, as the rolling system. Uh, Kaymak stone, which which is less affected by environmental condition is used the other part and Hawaiian stone which takes uh, air is used the inner environment of the building. Okay. Uh, the wall is built in two layers and fill it with rubble between the layers. Uh, this rubble also provides the thermal insulation for these buildings. Another important parameter is the uh, courtyard for these houses. The courtyard is the surrounded by high walls and the architectural structures. Uh, there is a microclimatic environment with variety of the plants and water elements. Uh, one of the water elements is the pool. Uh, local name of this pool is Gane, uh, which is both affect the visual aesthetic of the building and has a great effect as a passive cooling strategy called evapora evaporating uh, cooling. Uh, you can see one example here. Okay. And a study conducted in 2024 shows that the temperature bit, uh, difference between the shaded area and sunny area in the courtyard in Gaziantep is approximately 10 degree differences. And residents uh, in Gaziantep call it the courtyard as a Hayat. The main English meaning of Hayat is a life. They are spending most of their time during the summer. Because of that, they are calling uh, as a life. Also, as I know, they are doing their special days in these courtyards. They are gathering in that places. Yeah. Also, I think the 10 degree is a really impressive degree because uh, I'm working on the uh, similar things with the vegetations but there is not a huge effect as much as this yeah. I think in the Antep conditions is really impressive. This kind of elements both affect the social value, economic value, okay. besides the environmental value actually. Yeah, it's pretty nice. And we can talk about natural ventilation in that area. Uh, the houses are oriented towards the south due to the wind direction. And all windows on the ground floor face to the courtyard. Uh, on the upper floor, in addition to the regular windows, there are small windows on them. You can see here. Yeah. And the, the building elements are called Kushtasa, but uh, in English we can say top windows are commonly used in the southeastern region of the Turkey, and they are used for nature, uh, natural cross ventilation. Another important parameter is the underground chambers, uh, cellars, and caves. 
the caves are created at the basement level of the historical houses. Uh, the caves are an important feature of the city and houses, not just for their environmental effect, but also their historical, heritage, economic, and the social values like courtyards. They were used as a refrigerator to preserve food, which contributed to the food culture of the city. Uh, the city is included in the UNESCO Creative Cities Network because of the gastronomic importance, and the caves are also contributed to the uh, gastronomic importance of the city. Mara, I think this slide is really important because uh, that type of cave included houses mostly we found in the Cappadocia site in Turkey. People are so fascinating and want to stay in uh, experience that cave uh, houses or places. But I see that they are integrated the daily life to these caves in Antep and it's not much uh, known in the uh, so in the society. That's yeah, why I think course. it is really important part in your study. Yeah, of course, these uh, caves are different from the Cappadocia part because these uh, caves and underground chambers are the, under the houses. We cannot see from the outside. Mm -hmm. You need to go inside the courtyard, oh. then you can enter from the courtyard the, uh, these caves. Oh, it's really interesting. Yeah. And it is a remarkable feature that the, these caves are pretty cool, especially in hot summer months. And residents describe caves as a natural air conditioner of the cities also. Um, a study in 2023 shows the effect of caves on the moisture and temperature balance of the houses. And you can see that the relative humidity in the caves was higher and the temperature lower than the inside of the houses. And the ground floor of the houses with caves was found to be more humid and cooler than the houses without caves. Even there is no direct connection from caves to the houses. Uh, the caves is accessed from the courtyard. They are an influential element in the house's moisture and temperature balances. Um, to discover dynamic and ever-evolving system, firstly, thematic analysis was conducted in that area. Uh, themes such as the value, senses, and uh, material are found. Then the relationship of these themes are investigated. Then it is analyzed through the uh, system dynamic approaches. Uh, system dynamics provide an understanding of the factors which affect the system and dynamic relationship between them. And the main goal of the system dynamic is to help people make better decisions when faced with complex and dynamic problems. And the approach provides methods and tools for modeling and analyzing dynamic systems. Model results can be used to communicate key findings to help everyone understand the behavior of the system. Uh, I will talk about also causal loop diagrams. Causal loop diagrams helps to understand the cause and effect relationship within a system. Consists of reinforcing and balancing feedback loop that influence the behavior of the system. Here is the, my initial findings. This is an aggregated causal loop diagram for residents. It can seem a little complex, but I will try to summarize my initial findings for you. Uh, each team is dif uh, in different colors, and blue arrows show reinforcing relationship, while red arrows show balancing relationship between the parameters. And when the, uh, here, can you see my arrow? No. Okay, no. Uh, here, you can see when the year residents leave it in the house increase it, it will increase the sense of belonging and their adaptation to leave the historic buildings. And it will affect their desired thermal comfort, which affect the usage of the passive strategies like courtyard and caves. Uh, as I mentioned before, it will affect the perceived thermal comfort in the summer, these passive strategies. And thermal comfort perception of the users seems the one of the main motivation that affect the usage of these places. 
and also it is seen that the traditional passive system such as cave, courtyard, and the wall thickness of uh, these historic buildings, especially in hot climate region, are an important parameter for the user's thermal comfort, especially in the summer months. Um, environmental condition for the other side of the map, environmental conditions and the people's comfort expectation have changed uh, with modernization and historic buildings uh, have begun not fully met these comfort conditions. And abandonment cause uh, increase of number of demolished buildings, uh, which cause security problems. And these problems trigger to change the original features like cutting the trees in the courtyard and changing the original doors and this cutting the trees affect their uh, microclimatic condition in the courtyard and this affect their uh, perceived thermal comfort especially and we can see here oh sorry you can see here is user feelings like uh, security or happiness and the value of the buildings are uh, essential factors that trigger their building use and approach to the uh, neighborhood regarding conservation, energy use and thermal comfort. For conclusion, we can say the preservation of the heritage value of these buildings while ensuring their energy efficiency is important parameters. While achieving this balance, it is very important to discover the potential of the buildings and uh, evaluate them together with the perception and the behavior of the residents. And uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, this is multi-layered complex and dynamic system. It is crucial to understand main factors and their effects on the system. Thank you for your listening. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, we can towards the like Marve, you can take it, yeah. Question about you said there was a different type of stone used inside and outside, right? As yes, you had a you, you said when you talked about the construction mm -hmm. that there was a different stone on the outside and a different one on the inside. Yes. Could you talk a little bit about the different aspects of the two stones oh, being used? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, the material type is changed. The outside. Uh, stone is the thick stone and the inside used stone is different than the others then uh, this helps them for their thermal comfort uh, taking the uh, temperature inside of these stones. This is different. Two type of the stones are local stones uh, used in Gaziantep. And they're both, they're both uh, limestones? Yeah, they're both limestones. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, thank you very much for a very fascinating discussion and presentation. So I had two questions. Um, the first, have you looked into how some of these features can be replicated in modern mass manufactured cities? Um, some of the learnings can be used to try and overcome the need for air conditioning uh, mm -hmm. that we have in modern cities. And the second question is, I'm very intrigued by these type of buildings during the summer, but how do they cope during the winter? Um, I'm interested to find out about that as well. Yeah, of course. For the first question, there are many studies that are uh, searching about the feature of these houses, how they can adapt these features to the modern houses. But uh, nowadays, we, we cannot see these features in the modern houses, but there are some academic studies uh, searching on this topic. For the other question, mostly the summer are uh, really hard for them. They need to develop some strategies for cope with the uh, hot climate regions. For winter, actually, they can adapt the system and they can use some uh, passive um, traditional system like stoves and this is enough for them but in, during the summer uh, they don't want to use too much mechanical system because the low income uh, residents are living that area so they are trying to use more passive systems like uh, courtyard or the caves they are using uh, this kind of features most of their time.
Tja. Well, thank you, Murphy, for the presentation. It's a really interesting topic. Uh, I have two questions. The first one, I'm interested in value that you mentioned and uh, what kind of heritage value that you found really significant uh, impacting this uh, intervention's behavior. Mm -hmm. And uh, what makes it different uh, conserving the modern building and the heritage one? Of course. In this slide, you can see when the heritage value of the building increase, their satisfaction level actually increase. When their satisfaction level increase, they would like to preserve the more original features. So this kind of the values like cultural value, heritage value, because uh, they are lived here in that area uh, really long times, and they attached uh, heritage value in that kind of the buildings and this triggered their satisfaction level and the preservation of the buildings and uh, if they adopt uh, this kind of the buildings they are more tend to preserve these buildings i see so they concern about the originality of yes yeah and i have a second question actually so uh, the strength of the system dynamics is actually to understand the unintended consequences have you found uh, from the model that there is an unintended consequences uh, that potentially happen in the futures mm -hmm. given the current practice of uh, this uh, Gazantab yeah. conservations uh, Actually, before starting this study, I wasn't expect the security effect thermal comfort. When you, when I say there is a relation between the security and thermal comfort, people say how this is, this seems uh, impossible. But security effect uh, their behaviors and they try to uh, get some measures for security problems. So it affects their behaviors towards the. Uh, this kind of the buildings. So, as I said, this is a multi-layered system and each of affect each other. Like, uh, the problem on the neighborhood scale can affect the, some features on the building scale. So, this can affect also the building component scale. This is a uh, multi-layered and dynamic system. Thank you. Thank you, Mervi. Um, great presentation. Thanks. So, um, I just had a question regarding, um, so obviously the mapping is really um, fascinating. It needs time to be appreciated. But I was wondering how this fits in with sort of wider systems. So um, are you, what are you going to do next? Um, mm -hmm. necessarily, um, not necessarily what you're going to do next, but what, how do you envisage this map fitting into or connecting to other um, sort of systems like health or health and well-being or um, which is an area that I'm interested in um, or education um, so I just wanted to know yeah um, actually I created this map with the interviews and the interviews focused on the three uh, main uh, themes like heritage conservation energy efficiency and thermal comfort and their approach how they approach these buildings how they value this kind of the buildings and with the system dynamics I try to see the whole pictures uh, and holistically we can in that case, I cannot say just the building features are important for the energy efficiency. In that system, I can say the uh, people behavior and their perception, their approach, all of them are the important in terms of the energy efficiency and the conservation part. And with, as a consequence of uh, this study, I'm planning to create a guidance for the heritage conservation, for sustainable heritage conservation at neighborhood level to see the all parameters. Thanks a lot for the talk. That was um, very enlightening. Um, just a quick question. So, you know, I'm sure a lot of the buildings that you mentioned were quite common throughout the Mediterranean due to the climate, right? Mm -hmm. So even before the Ottomans, for example, the Byzantine Empire, maybe the building features were quite similar. Was there anything specific to the Ottomans, um, any specific features which were specific to the Ottomans, in particular in relation to um, conservation of energy or energy efficiency. Are there any specific Ottoman innovations within these features? Mm -hmm. 
Maybe we can say the courtyard and caves are really important parameter for energy efficiency part. But beside, as I said, beside the building features, we should consider the all parameters. As you said, there are a lot of typical uh, examples like this. We can see a lot of examples like this in the Mediterranean uh, countries. But we should uh, look this kind of the studies uh, with a context not just uh, as a buildings, with context with, uh, will help us to create some sustainable solutions. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Uh, yes, I was um, curious about a certain data. I don't know if you have it. Um, I think you said at the start of the presentation, 25% uh, of the European houses are historic and about 12% mm -hmm. in? 13%. 13% in Turkey. So, and then we had the map where, um, yes, obviously the Middle Eastern parts, they use stone and more mm -hmm. in their architecture and on the northwest side we see more uh, wooden houses. Um, and then obviously in terms of durability, uh, when you travel across Turkey as well, you see in when you travel the Middle Eastern parts, the Eastern parts, you see a lot more of these historic houses. Whereas, because it's wooden, uh, like on the northwestern side, it's hard. It's harder to find. Now they they try to renovate and you know uh, rehabilitate these ones, but essentially the statistic that I'm looking for, if you have it, is what percent of this 13 percent is uh, in the middle, like regions like Gaziantep. Mm -hmm. and, Yes, so is it like of these 13%, 10% is all in Middle East and just 3% in, let's say, Marmara region? Like, mm -hmm. do we have a data for this? Yeah, actually we don't have this data, but we, uh, I got this data from the uh, Turkish Statistical Institution. Uh, they j just give this data, the building built before 1980s is this percentage. But uh, they are giving the, um, this data according to cities. You can find uh, how many buildings are in which cities. So you can classify according to uh, regions. That's actually quite interesting. Thank you. Uh, I will check that out. Okay. Is there any questions? One more question. Hi, uh, sorry, <laughs> quick one. Um, I'm just curious <coughs> about the caves in it. Uh, were buildings, uh, firstly, in this day and age, do people still build homes over caves in it, firstly? And secondly, um, the value of those homes with caves, are they sort of higher? Uh, and is the structural integrity sort mm -hmm. of, you know, affected by those caves? Actually, when this building's built, they extracted this material from the caves, and the caves are created by um, people, not they are uh, naturally are there. They created by people. They extracted this material and they used these uh, stones while they are building these buildings. And there, are, there are also connection between the old caves, like an underground city, while they are extracting these materials. Fascinating information. I've been before the Antep, but I've never been in the, uh, that type of place in Antep. I think it's a really important information to me. Uh, is there any questions? Yeah. Dita, one more. Um, my question is related to the earthquake. Unfortunately, last year there was a big earthquake in the south part of Turkey, and this affected Gaziantep too much. But we were wondering how this earthquake affected your students. Like, is there any, like, do you show us some dates about these were collected before earthquake or after earthquake, or mm -hmm. can you just give us an explanation about it? Actually, this data collected before earthquake, which I mentioned this, is, this was a pilot study, but of course earthquake affect the Gaziantep. But um, I was lucky the earthquake wasn't affected this case study. The buildings are safe and people are using now these buildings. Um, so there is no much affecting this uh, neighborhood, but uh, there are a lot of buildings, historical uh, neighborhoods affected by earthquakes. And actually, I, in future, I would like to compare them, the effect of the earthquake on the, how people value these buildings. 
another question. So you mentioned the earthquake didn't affect these kind of buildings, but is there any specific reason why earthquake didn't affect this kind of structure or is there any explanation or study? Um, I think this is uh, because of the place where building built about the neighborhood, location of the neighborhood. I think, yeah, one more question. I think the final question probably from me. Um, I'm not sure whether I missed anything, but I'm wondering, are these houses all domestic houses? Or um, is there any community buildings as well are you searching for? Yeah, in that neighborhood there are a lot of buildings, reused buildings and residential buildings, but these studies are about the just residential buildings. Yeah, only focus. Uh, is there a specific name of the neighborhood? Bay neighborhood. Uh, yeah. Bay neighborhood, yeah. Okay. Final question, maybe? Yeah, in the right yeah, side. Something really that I call. So, how we can save uh, energy, uh, how we can be energy efficient in our houses in London? Because during the summer time, it's very, very hot. And do you have any recommendation? <laughs> Actually, as, as I said, <laughs> every buildings are unique cases. You need to inves investigate this carefully. So I cannot say something to you directly, you should do this to your buildings. We should investigate your building and see condition of the, your buildings and we can recommend okay. after that. Let's be for <laughs> Well, thank you very much for the insightful talk and thank you all for joining us uh, once again with Young Scholar Seminar Series. Thank you.